Yeah, go ahead, Rem. Oh, Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord. We need your gracious favor today, oh Lord Jesus, as we grapple with something which we have taken for granted, oh Lord Jesus, that you are a loving God and that you will forgive all our sins and that we can come to you when we are in trouble. Lord, we need to understand that you are the Holy One, oh Lord, and we need to rever you, oh Lord Jesus. Lord, give us the understanding today when we discuss this, oh Lord Jesus, and give Mohan the wisdom to, to add to this, this knowledge, Lord, that we have of you and how to, how to handle that knowledge, oh Lord Jesus. Lord, not to take you for granted, oh Lord Jesus. Lord, we all come here together today, oh Lord Jesus, looking forward to what the word has to say on this, oh Lord Jesus. We thank you and praise you, Lord, that we have this platform on which we can discuss these things and to get a better understanding of this omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient God, O oh Lord Jesus. Jesus, give us the understanding and the wisdom, Lord, to, to further our knowledge of God, the Father, O oh Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray for each and every one of us who are here today, O oh Lord. I thank you for bringing us safely back to our homes from all our travels. I surrender each and every one who's present today, O oh Lord Jesus. I especially pray for Mohan as he talks to us today, O oh Lord. And I ask for your spirit to guide him, O oh Lord Jesus. We thank you and praise you, Lord Jesus. Then, in your mighty I name, I pray. That, uh, Amen. The fear of the Lord. Uh, came into uh, my mind and uh, I knew I'd written something about it so I, I uh, found it and I posted it to you all. Now, that's actually uh, quite well written <laughs> but uh, yeah, there, there's so much more and uh, I'm hoping that we can look into it uh, uh, this morning. Okay. Now uh, believe it or not I believe the fear of the Lord is mentioned more than the love of God. In the word of God, okay, it's arguable, but I think it is mentioned more than the love of God, uh, and and definitely more than fear not. Lots of people like to say that there are 365 references to fear not in the Bible. That is not true, first of all. Okay, if you include even if you include all uh, different variations of fear not, uh, there are probably about 150 or not more than that. Okay, but fear the Lord is there. Uh, I think. 360 or 370 times uh, in, in the Bible, okay? And uh, of course, love is also there, but uh, uh, love is expressed more in the New Testament, right? And uh, we are in the age of grace. Uh, that's why it's, it's, it's mentioned more there. Okay? So we are going to look at the fear of God because it is mentioned uh, so many times. I, you saw how many verses I had quoted uh, in that small uh, note I gave. There are just so many more about the fear of the Lord. All of us know the standard one, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Uh, okay, uh, uh, But there are so many more on, on the same lines. Okay, So let me just quickly go to whatever I put session I one. Uh, I, I think that might be one more because uh, it's a subject uh, that a lot of us know about and we can add our uh, input uh, to add value to the, the whole group as such. Okay, Now, First of all, I thought, let's start with what is fear? Okay, uh, fear is a, uh, not a very positive word, right? I mean, okay, and I took a few definitions as I started doing last week or the week before. Okay, now Miriam Webster says the first definition is an unpleasant, often strong emotion caused by anticipation or awareness of danger, okay? Uh, First of all, as I said, it's very negative. Then it's an emotion. It's a strong emotion. Okay, uh, but Miriam Webster also mentions another meaning: profound reverence and awe, and especially towards God. Okay, uh, like like we have for our fathers or our parents. Okay, uh, we, we fear our parents. It's not the negative uh, connotation of fear so much, but 
the, the awe and uh, respect, or uh, maybe not reverence to her parents, but definitely respect. Okay. Uh, Cambridge says something similar for, uh, to the first meaning an unpleasant emotion or thought that you have when you are frightened or worried by something dangerous, painful or bad that is happening or might happen. Okay. Uh, I'm sure there are other similar meanings from the other dictionaries, but I just wanted to, it's something that, it's an emotion that, uh, you know, uh, quickens your heartbeat, uh, uh, your pulse rate goes up and uh, uh, you, you're on a heightened state of alert, okay? Uh, uh, because you are thinking or expecting something bad to happen, something has triggered that emotion, okay? Now that's what we're going to look at. What what, what causes fear? Okay, what I mean, we saw what fear is, but then what causes fear? Uh, right now we're talking in the natural. Okay, uh, what causes fear is actually a sense of danger uh, that signals are sent to our brain from our five senses, one or more of our five senses, that something bad is going to happen. Okay, our brain gets triggered by our senses. Uh, that uh, something bad is going to happen. Now, of course, uh, there can be fear when you get news of something, okay? Uh, but that is also either by, by sight uh, or, uh, or by hearing, okay? Uh, so again, the senses are involved even when you get news that uh, makes you fearful, okay? Otherwise, it's just something you heard a noise, especially if you're staying alone like me. The other day, I, I think it was during our prayer, okay? Uh, out of the blue, I heard someone whistling very close to me. Okay. <laughs> There's nobody in the house. It's 7.30 in the evening. And I actually put myself on, uh, uh, I muted my video and I looked around each room and I kept asking, is there anyone there? You know, I, I, it's so crazy. I mean, it doesn't take much to trigger fear. Okay. Uh, it was just, for me, the fear was... Uh, how come? How, how could somebody get into the house? It was that real, the whistling. It might have been from one of the participants' houses, but it was. It sounded very real. Okay. Anyway, so then, is fear bad? Is it a bad thing? We said it's it's a negative connotation. Okay, uh, but is it really bad? You know, and I've, uh, uh, you know, uh, when, when uh, people used to say fear not, three sixty five. Uh, references to fear not one for every day of the year. Uh, the emphasis was there is no need to be afraid. Uh, there is no uh, there is no need to be afraid because of our faith in Jesus Christ, of course. But fear is actually, if you if you study it a little more deeply, fear is an emotion caused by our senses, as I said. Okay, and our senses were given by God Almighty for good purposes, not for bad purposes. Okay, and so if our senses trigger off an emotion of fear. It is to protect us, okay? Being alerted to danger is not a bad thing. Being alerted to danger is a good thing, okay? It is given by God to protect us, a protection mechanism that is normally heightened, that normally brings a heightened state of alertness, okay? So fear in itself is something that God instituted in our physical body, okay? Including our, uh, our soul and our uh, uh, emotions and will and our physical body, okay? We are spirit, soul, and... Uh, body, right? So it's between the soul and the body that the emotions come in. Okay, emotions are part of our uh, soul, and uh, fear is an emotion. Okay, so it is it is a good emotion as long as it is there to protect us. Okay. Then uh, uh, I thought, okay, what what is the biblical attitude to fear? What, what does the Bible say about fear? Okay. Uh, as I said, there are so many instances of fear not. Uh, uh, and in fact, fear can take you to more than a heightened uh, level of uh, attention or detail or uh, uh, preparedness. It can take you to a stage of numbing inactivity, okay? It could paralyze you, okay, uh, being paralyzed by fear. Now, that is not a good thing because the purpose of uh, the emotion has been defeated. If you become, so, uh, you know, uh, struck to your place and you're not able to do anything, okay? Uh, so it's it's those situations, whether it is the spiritual uh, attacks from the evil one or situations where you are not able to do anything because you are afraid, uh, that is what the Bible, I believe, says that we should not fear. Okay, we If we get fear, we should act on it and either protect ourselves uh, or uh, look to God to guide us into a, 
uh, deliverance from that situation. Now, I, I, the, the example that I read, I was trying to find the book. It is an old book from one of my uncles my, who passed away, C.S. Woman. Uh, I, had, I got quite a few of his uh, Christian books and stuff, uh, which I had read actually, you know, that about fear being uh, an emotion that was given by God to protect us, okay? Uh, for example, uh, he said, uh, uh, would you like to sit in a car with a fearless driver? Okay, uh, that, that guy, sometimes I get scared sitting with Tomo, not nowadays, uh, in the good old days, okay? <laughs> because uh, he's cutting it so fine, uh, he, he's figuring out what the other guy is going to do and he's going to go through this way and that way. And most of the time, my heart is in my mouth. Uh, as I said, not nowadays, in the old days, uh, when he... Uh, uh, was a rally driver and stuff like that. So if you're, you know, uh, a fearless person is not necessarily a good thing to be fearless, okay? Uh, a fearless might, person might do stupid things, okay? I'm not talking about Tomo, but generally. So uh, fearlessness is not necessarily a good attitude, but there are, as I said, uh, enough uh, mentions in the word of God that we should not fear, okay? And that is talking about a stage or a state of fear where you are unable to do anything or, or you're unwilling to do anything and uh, you get sucked into uh, the that, that situation where uh, uh, it leads to further uh, uh, separation from God. When we are with God, we don't need to fear, right? Uh, except God, fear God himself. Okay. Uh, as I said, it's a, it can go to a numbing inactivity stage. Okay. And this is not for a Christian. Okay. Uh, in fact, as I said, there are more instances of fear the Lord than fear not, definitely, in the word of God, and uh, uh, arguably even more than uh, love itself, uh, references to love, fear the Lord is there, okay? So how is the fear of the Lord different from natural fear? The natural fear is what we discussed uh, uh, quite a bit up to now, okay? Uh, so natural fear warns or protects us from natural dangers, that's what I said, right? Okay. Uh, but the fear of the Lord is not and cannot be initiated by our natural senses, okay? The fear of the Lord cannot be initiated by our natural senses. We cry out to him when we are in danger. <laughs> that is a cop-out rather more than anything else, okay? Uh, but the actual fear of God, okay, whether it's reverential law or actually afraid that he might do something bad to us, okay, that is not initiated by our natural senses. That has to come from our spirit being, okay? Uh, the fear of the Lord is actually initiated by our faith, our faith in the word of God. I've, I've stressed again and again that when we do the, uh, these Bible studies, one of, the, uh, one of the givens is that we believe the word of God. We believe in the inerrancy or the accuracy of the word of God, okay? Yes, there are ways to interpret different books, but uh, we believe that is inerrant. Most of our I don't know if our creeds have it, but a lot of statements of faith in almost any church will start with, we believe the, uh, the word of God is uh, inerrant, that is accurate, okay? So the fear of the Lord is actually initiated by our faith, meaning our understanding of what has gone on before as we hear it from the word of God, okay? What the Bible states about the supernatural and about eternity, these are what triggers the fear of the Lord, okay? That is, it is initiated by faith and faith in what the Bible states about supernatural, the supernatural return. Not faith in what he says about how he'll take care of us and how he'll bless us and, uh, you know, how we will see uh, our children's children. And, you know, uh, it's not that. It's about the supernatural, okay? Remember what Paul said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against the uh, spiritual forces in heavenly places, okay? That the, for, for God, that's the real world, okay? I, I, I saw, I think I mentioned it last week. I saw three episodes of the three uh, versions, uh, not versions, what do you call them? Of, of the Matrix, okay? Matrix is wrong pronunciation. My daughter very strongly told me that. Matrix. Uh, so Matrix is this guy, Keanu Reeves is living in a world which is not real. It's actually a computer program and it's all organized by somebody else, some evil guys. And there are some people who are out of the Matrix who are trying to bring the matrix down. And, and I'm thinking, okay, so much of this is from the word of God. You know, I mean, they take half truth from the word of God and make movies and make lots of money. Okay. But what we believe is that the, the spiritual world is more real than the physical world. Okay. 
the physical world is time bound the spiritual world is not time bound the spiritual world is not space bound the physical world is space bound time and space define our physical beings our physical lives okay uh, so when we degenerate or when we develop a fear of the lord that is based on our faith in the word of god what the bible says about super the supernatural and about eternity then we move to faith in the attributes of god rain mentioned it in her prayers okay uh, and among the attributes of god we then come one step further faith in the holiness of god okay or belief in the holiness of god this is the crux of uh, having reverential awe uh, of of god or of the king faith in the holiness of god we we believe we have to believe god is holy okay now what do we know about the fear of the lord from his word this is one verse that i had not seen before and i i, I saw an old derek prince uh, uh, bits and pieces of it i didn't <laughs> i didn't get to see the whole thing unfortunately uh isaiah 336 okay it's the second half of 336 it says the fear of the lord is the key to this treasure okay and and the, the treasure is mentioned earlier wisdom and understanding and all okay uh in fact some of the verse, uh, some of the uh, translations say the fear of the lord is his treasure okay uh it's it's something that is so vitally important for our lives uh because that un understanding and having a proper reverence and awe for god or having a fear of the lord is key to our understanding our uh, what's that french uh, phrase raison d'etre uh, the reason for our living the purpose of our life we need to have the fear of the lord because that's what is going to drive everything into true wisdom as we know so many verses talk about it right proverbs 2 2 to 5 says my son if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments funny you should use the word treasure okay with you making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding yes if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures again the word treasures then you will understand the fear of the lord and find the knowledge of god okay the fear of the lord is god is his treasure okay and if we got to seek it seek wisdom and understanding because when we seek wisdom we will first understand what is the fear of the lord and then understand who god is then true wisdom will start coming into our lives okay and what did job uh, uh, actually god says uh, job 28 28 and he said to man behold the fear of the lord that is wisdom and to turn away from evil is understanding okay there are so many other verses that i gave in my notes so i, I won't uh, go into that there are just too many verses about fearing the lord and how that is the beginning of wisdom uh uh you know and this the instruction of wisdom uh and why is that because true wisdom comes from understanding who we are and we will never understand who we are until we come face to face well can't come face to face but in 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 an expression face to face with the holiness of god until we come to realize the holiness of god uh yeah you, there are two instances in the bible one is uh, of course moses wanting to see uh, god's face and god says uh, no you can't see my face okay uh, no one has seen my face and lived uh, but you can see me as i pass by you can see me as i uh, and by the way take your uh, shoes off because the ground is standing on is holy okay and he came back from that encounter and the people could not look at him okay just by seeing god receding in the distance uh, people could not look at look at him because his face was so bright the holiness of god had rubbed on to him in that sense okay and the second instance is uh, uh in uh, isaiah okay when when the king uh, king dies and uh, uh, isaiah says in the year that so and so and so king died i saw the lord okay uh, uh, uh and uh, of course even the king was referred to as lord uh, with the small l okay uh, sorry big l and uh, small o r d 
then he says, I, I saw the Lord. Okay, and there were these uh, seraphims. Uh, uh, and see what happened to Isaiah when, when he, uh, he said, woe is me. I am undone. I am an evil person with evil tongue living in an evil generation. See, the realization of who we are, truly are, okay, all of us are born in sin, comes when we come in touch with the holiness of God. And that realization is important for us to grow in true wisdom, okay? Uh, it's actually, uh, that's why there are so many verses. I mean, okay, most of them in Proverbs, agreed, but Job, it's there. Uh, in, in the Psalms also, it is there that the fear of the Lord is crucial to growing in wisdom. And once we grow in wisdom, we apply, see, applied knowledge is actually wisdom, right? Just staying in the head is, is not wisdom, really. Unless you apply knowledge in a good way, it's, it's not really wisdom. That's what I would say, okay? Uh, wisdom unapplied is a useless wisdom, I would say, okay? One way or the other, you have to apply. So to apply it in our lives, we, we get this wisdom of who we are. What is the purpose of our life? Uh, once we come to truly understand the holiness of God. And in fact, the fear of the Lord, which comes from understanding the holiness of God, is arguably the strongest instruction given in the word of God. Okay? Even more than love, as I said. Okay? Now, what else can we look at? Okay? Uh, as I said... Uh, the other meaning of fear that we discuss uh, is profound reverence and awe toward God. Okay. Uh, okay. I got something wrong. Why, why do we need to fear God? Okay. Uh, we understood what the fear of the Lord is and how we can uh, attain. As we understand his holiness, we will uh, understand uh, the fear of the Lord. But why do we need to fear God? Okay. Uh, why do we fear our parents or, or have reverence and awe towards our parents, okay, or respect them? Okay. Now, Acts 17, 28 says, in him, and this is not talking about Jesus, okay, this is when Paul is giving the uh, famous, uh, uh, most logical uh, message he ever gave at, at Athens, I believe, when he saw the uh, statue of the unknown God or something like that, okay. Uh, it was his most coherent, uh, uh, logical uh, uh, message, okay, and, and uh, the Bible doesn't talk about the church being established in Athens at all, even though that was his most, uh, uh, what do you call it, well, best message you could say in terms of everything tying up together and all that, but in, in that he says, in him we live and move and have our being, okay, now the word being, we are called human beings, okay, but the one true being, to being means to be, okay? You remember the name of God, L-O-D, L-O-R-D capitals? It's Yahweh, I am, that I am, okay? I am, Yahweh means I am, okay? There is only one true being, and that is the universal being, which is God, okay? We are human beings. We are created by him. We have, we are finite. We have a beginning and an end, at least physical life. Our spirits are from God, and of course, it goes back to God. And, uh, uh, you know, that part, that's what I said. We understand the fear of God only when we concentrate on our spirit man, okay? And then once we acknowledge that he is our maker, I mean, look at that. It says, in him, we live and move and have our being. We, we all pay lip service to all these things. As Again, I think Renu mentioned it in her prayer. Uh, but we have not really you know, taking it into our lives as this is most important for me, you know. Once we acknowledge, let me put that out, there's something I typed, it's not. Once we acknowledge that he is our maker and that in the most complete sense, in him we live and move and have our being, profound reverence and awe should be the appropriate response, okay? That, to understand and have a fear of the Lord. See, I said should be. It is not an automatic response, unfortunately, because God has also given us our own will. Uh, and he has given, see, he says wisdom. Wisdom means uh, proper 
positive application of knowledge. Okay, now once we understand, okay, God is all supreme being, and then we don't do anything about it or do or continue to do whatever we were doing in the past. Uh, you know, th that's not wisdom. That's just foolishness. If we understand who God is, I know omnipotent, omniscient, omni present uh, and yeah we keep on doing whatever we want to do uh, so, ah who knows maybe i can repent in the 11th hour as some people say <laughs> you know uh, that's foolishness that's not wisdom okay it's the appropriate response it is not an automatic response it is still up to us okay uh, I, I believe if we have an encounter with God, we, uh, I, I think we'll not have any problem after in, in the sense of like Paul had an encounter or Moses had an encounter or Isaiah had the encounter. You know, I mean, he, 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 just, he became aware of his sin, okay? Con contact with the Holy God will make us aware of our inadequacy, of our unholiness. Okay, that is why when a person is converted, when a person becomes born, it is the Holy Spirit. It's not the preacher speaking whatever truths he or she may say. It is the Holy Spirit that will convict you. When you truly understand what that preacher is saying, okay, uh, then you're, you, you're exposed to who you really are. Oh my God, you know, I am unclean. Okay, uh, and then of course God touched him with the coal. God is able to change that situation if we are sincere in our desire to repent, okay? Uh, and then, as I said, we become aware or we become in awe of his transcendent majesty. That, that's what he is, okay? His transcendent majesty. The I am, as I said. He, he is the supreme being. He is the only one who is being from eternity to eternity. He's the alpha and omega, okay? And that is basically his holiness. He is completely different from everything and everybody else. He's, he's a, I mean, we say holy means pure. We say holy, there's another meaning of holiness is separated unto God, okay? But actually holiness is, is, is the essence of God, okay? The essence of God. Uh, that is, he is, uh, he is, because he's not a was or will be, he is, okay? He always is. The I am, I am that I am, okay? Uh, and uh, that understanding has to come to us and it has to, it has to grip our hearts and uh, change our lifestyle. Otherwise, it has no meaning. Uh, that otherwise, we still, be, we are not gotten to the wisdom that that should provoke. The, the fear of the Lord should provoke a certain wisdom because the knowledge that it reveals to us of who God is and who we are, okay? Uh, should provoke us to a changed lifestyle. Uh, and once that happens, you know, uh, uh, wisdom will start coming into our lives and being applied in our life, okay? Now, it's very interesting to note, I mean, we, last week we discussed uh, the Ten Commandments, not all of them, but we discussed the Fifth Commandment, which was honor the, thy father and mother, uh, and something about living long in the land, right? Uh, and then from six to... Uh, 10 are the other verses, uh, other commandments connected with our relationship with people, okay? And we said the first four commandments are uh, our relationship to God. Now, out of those first four commandments, there are two commandments that are pretty much ignored. And this particular one is very important. Exodus 27. You shall not take the name of your Lord, your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. How, how often do we even quote this? <laughs> so this is a commandment that not many people actually uh, uh, talk about much, you know. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Look at the world around us today. I mean, I, I myself use the name of the Lord in vain sometimes, okay. Uh, you know, expect Jesus Christ. Okay, <laughs> what does that mean? I'm taking the name of the Lord in vain. Okay, and and here I am professing to be a born again believing Christian. Okay, but you know what happens uh, uh, in the world. Watch, watch any movie if you want. Okay, I mean, the name of the Lord is taken in vain all the time. Okay, and that's it's so unfortunate. It's one of the ten commandments. Okay, uh, imagine. I mean, in in a a set of commandments that were supposed to define, because all the other commandments come from these, huh, by the way, uh, define how God wanted his people to live. This 
was included as the third or fourth commandment. I believe it's the third one. Okay. You shall not take the name of the, your Lord in vain. Okay. And then, of course, the Sabbath also. That's another one which we are pretty flipped with nowadays, uh, keeping the Sabbath holy. I, I, I don't want to go into that. But this is right there. Okay. After he says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind. And then you shall not have any other gods before me. You shall not take the name of your Lord in vain. It comes way before our relationship with other people, our parents, including our parents. Okay, it is our relationship with God, okay? uh, because God's name is holy. Okay, now go back, uh, not go, go forward. Fast forward to Matthew six nine. Matthew six nine is the beginning of the Lord's prayer. Okay, what what is the first petition we make to God? We say, Our Father in heaven, and then we say, Hallowed be your name. Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Once we call unto him, the first thing you say is, God, we want your name to be hallowed, to be kept holy in this world. Okay, again, we, 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 don't, we don't really, you know, we, we don't really, you know, we, we, <laughs> probably there are. Uh, Places, our families, where we say, how fast can we say the Lord's Prayer? You know, I mean, hallowed be thy name is the first petition that Jesus is saying you should make to the Father when you pray. Teach us to pray, the disciples said. And he said, this is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Okay, and then of course, thy kingdom come and the rest of it. But the first petition is hallowed be your name. Okay, in my life, hallowed be your name. In, in this world around me, hallowed be your name. But I can only control what's in my, my life. And I can, of course, pray for the other. But are we even, as I said, uh, I know I, I don't, uh, uh, you know, control it much in my, my okay, I'm not cursing or anything with, uh, with the name of God. But still, you know, it's not, when it says hallowed, let your name always be holy. That's what it means, okay? You are holy. Therefore, let your name be holy. That's what it's saying, okay? Now, by the way, the Bible, uh, as, a, as a, you know, like in, today we are we are trying to uh, uh, type something or express uh, uh, something in a written document. There are many ways where we can emphasize something. Okay, uh, like in my things, like some of these things are bold. Okay, some of them are in italics. Some of them are in a different color. This is this is for emphasis. Okay, now in in the Bible. Uh, one of the most common uses for emphasis is repetition, okay? Uh, I, I think most of you all know that, okay? Uh, verily, verily, I say unto you, or, or truly, truly, okay? Uh, Paul actually, he repeats, he says, again, I say unto you, okay? And he says the same thing, okay? Now, the only time the word is used three times, okay, is holy. Holy, holy, holy. This is when uh, when uh, when Isaiah saw the the seraphims, I think. Okay, the ones that had six wings. The one they covered their faces. One, uh, two, two they covered their faces. Two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. They were saying, "Holy, holy, holy." It's it's the same word, holy. Okay, but the Bible has mentioned it three times because of the emphasis that needs to be given to God's holiness. Okay, that's the pattern in the Bible. Repetition is the pattern for emphasis. And you know, I don't think any other word is mentioned three times for emphasis, okay? So definitely, you don't see love, love, love anywhere, okay? Uh, or grace, grace, grace anywhere for that matter. But you do see holy, holy, holy. I think in, in Revelation also, I'm not sure, okay? So God is trying to tell us something here, okay? And these are the seraphim or cherubim or whatever who are in the presence of God. They are covering their faces and they're covering their feet just like uh, God asked Moses to remove his shoes. One of the reasons I understood is, uh, see, the feet is what brings us in contact on a regular basis with this world, with this earth, okay? With this sinful life, okay? And so we, we get contaminated by it, okay? Uh, could be because of that. So anyway, they were covering their feet as well as their faces and flying, okay? And they emphasized what was the single most important attribute of God, which is this. Holiness. All right. <clears throat> okay. And definitely God's holiness is the single most important attribute. Okay. 
Uh, and uh, I, I want to stop there today. Okay, uh, but I think we can definitely have uh, one more uh, uh, session on the holiness of God. Basically, what I want to say here is uh, uh, for us to truly understand, okay, we, we all call ourselves born again believers, okay, which means we believe in the word of God. We believe uh, that Jesus uh, came to reconcile us to the Father, by the way. You know those uh, uh, those uh, cute diagrams that they draw, there's, there's, there's this uh, precipice in between and the cross is uh, uh, you know, uh, joining this precipice to the other person, and so all the sinners can go over to the kingdom of God. Uh, Jesus is the means of reconciliation to the Father. Uh, it, I, I don't want to say unfortunately, but somehow in the church, the emphasis is more on Jesus, okay, than on God the Father. Now, Jesus is the means of reconciling us to the Father. The Holy Spirit is the means of us walking in the will of the Father. The Father, the Father, okay? Now, we concentrate less on the Father. We concentrate more on Jesus. And we concentrate more on the Holy Spirit, okay? But the whole purpose of Jesus coming to this world, okay? Uh, he was the Lamb slain from the foundation of time, okay? From the foundation of the world. The Lamb without blemish. So, it would seem that his entire purpose, okay, was to restore creation, okay? Uh, and uh, the secondary purpose is for the creation to walk in God's ways through the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we, we need to understand that the Bible is, is about the Trinity, but as I said, there is the hierarchy and God the Father is the supreme being. He is the one who is absolute, of all, uh, and all God is holy. I mean, each of the persons of God is holy, but it's God's holiness as expressed in the Father that separated us from him. Bridge, uh, Jesus became the bridge for us to be restored to him. Uh, because he was also holy in this world. He was the only man without sin. As the son of man, he was without sin. Okay, So we need to understand this holiness. And when we understand this holiness, we will develop fear of the Lord. See, we are afraid of things in this life, whether it's COVID or, uh, you know, a sudden uh, near accident. Uh, you know, we, we, we have that heightened sense of alertness if we just miss an accident, you know. Uh, but... True, we are true spirit beings, and as true spirit beings, we need to be more aware of the spiritual realm. We need to be more aware of uh, the holiness of God, which is manifested in, in that realm. Okay, uh, and we need to be aware of what is the calling on our lives. Okay, that that's what is the meaning of the fear of the Lord. What, what does it mean in the Proverbs again and again? And it says uh, it's the beginning of wisdom. It's the instruction of wisdom. Uh, wisdom. True wisdom comes from knowing who God is and who we are, okay? Uh, and from that wisdom, uh, and that wisdom comes from knowing who God is. And knowing God means having uh, the fear of the Lord or the reverential awe of God, okay? So, uh, it's uh, a bit here and there, as I said, today. but uh, uh, it, essentially it's about our spirit beings responding to God who is spirit, okay? And... Uh, uh, that part is for us to actually uh, promote ourselves to that kind of a, uh, that kind of a, a level where we are more concerned about eternity, more concerned about uh, our spiritual life than we are about this life and and this world. Okay, so yeah, right. That's all I've got to say for today. Uh, I'm, I think we'll have one more session definitely. Uh, Jainva, as since you're in your friend's house, I'll ask you to talk first. Any give a fear of God in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Okay. Okay. In the Old Testament, we never had the grace and the Holy Spirit to help us to lead a holy life. Yeah. But in the New Testament, we have no excuse. We have the grace of God and help of the Holy Spirit to walk with God. Yeah. To, lead a, to lead a holy life, obeying all the commandments. Right. Okay. This is one difference. Fear and importance of the New Testament is the same. 
അതിന് വളരെ വ്യക്തമായിട്ട് അത് ഏത് രീതിയിൽ എടുക്കുന്ന എനിക്കറിയാം പെട്ടെന്ന് ഞാൻ നോക്കിയത് ഫസ്റ്റ് ജോൺ ഫോർ എയ്റ്റീൻ നോക്കി ഞാൻ ഇവിടെ മോളോട് പറഞ്ഞു എടുത്ത ഏത് കോണ്ടക്സ്റ്റ് ആണ് ഞാൻ നോക്കിയില്ലേ ഞാൻ അതൊക്കെ എടുത്ത് പറഞ്ഞതോ yeah there is no fear in love but perfect love casts out fear because yeah. fear involves torment so he who fears has not been made perfect in love okay okay so ee new testament le oru vyathasam aa njan parayan vannathu appo namakku fear of the lord ennu parayunnathu yesu nammale eppozhum nammodu koode undu he is immanuel yeah okay devam nammodu koode undu devam ella chindagalum സംസാരങ്ങളും പ്രവർത്തനങ്ങളും കാണുന്നു കേൾക്കുന്നു അപ്പൊ നമ്മൾ ഓട്ടോമാറ്റിക്കലി വി വിൽ ബിക്കം എ ഹോളി പേഴ്സൺ അവിടെ ഒരു ഫിയറിന്റെ പ്രശ്നം വരുന്നില്ല അപ്പൊ ഞാൻ പറയാൻ വരുന്നത് ഫിയർ വേണ്ട എന്നല്ല ഒരു ഹോളി ലൈഫ് പറഞ്ഞ പോലെ ആഫ്റ്റർ ലൈഫിനെ കുറിച്ച് നമ്മൾ ചിന്തിക്കുമ്പോ എല്ലാം വേണം പക്ഷെങ്കിൽ ഓൾഡ് ടെസ്റ്റ്മെന്റിന്റെ അത്രയും ഒരു ഇതായിട്ട് നമ്മൾ ന്യൂ ടെസ്റ്റ്മെന്റിൽ കാണുന്നില്ല ബിക്കോസ് ഫിയറിനെക്കാട്ടിൽ കൂടുതൽ ദൈവത്തോട് കൂടെ നടക്കുന്ന ഒരു 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 വലിയ മഹാഭാഗ്യമാണ് ന്യൂ ടെസ്റ്റ്മെന്റ് ദൈവം നമുക്ക് നൽകിയിരിക്കുന്നത് അത്രേ ഉള്ളൂ യാ ഓക്കെ ഓഫ് കോഴ്സ് ദ ന്യൂ ടെസ്റ്റ്മെന്റ് ഇസ് ഡെഫിനറ്റ്ലി ടോക്കിംഗ് മോർ അബൌട്ട് ഗ്രേസ് ആൻഡ് ലവ് ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് കറക്റ്റ് ബട്ട് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ഫോർ ദ പർപ്പസ് ഓഫ് റീകൺസൈലിംഗ് ആസ് ടു ദ ഫാദർ ആസ് ഐ സെറ്റ് ജീസസ് കെയിം ടു റീകൺസൈൽ ആസ് ടു ദ ഫാദർ ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ബിക്കോസ് god allowed his grace to take preeminence in that situation okay his holiness is still above his grace is still above his love still above everything else holiness ne kurich alla nan parayunnathu holy spirit will guide us into holiness but nevertheless again our will is there and the importance of understanding god's holiness which is his most important attribute okay allengi ipo ende devam i remember in kodumban when we used to gather for our uh, uh, annual vacations uh on our option uh, uh we could not say devame in the house okay he would make us stand i think he would give us a wax also and then make us stand in the court ayyo nu varayanokkatilla devame nu varayanokkatilla ende devame how often we say ende devame what do we mean by that i mean i think it's taking the name of the lord in vain uh, you know uh, omg is one of the favorite uh, uh, abbreviations on whatsapp omg oh my god you know what what are we trying to say we do it as much as anyone else unfortunately okay uh, we are not understanding the reverence of god we are understanding the love of jesus okay fine and the love of god through express through jesus i am talking about the word immanuel yeah jesus god with us. us anu with us so the, the life automatically changes automatically about, nothing will change no, 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 no. anyway that, no, that's automatically all. nothing will change our will is still with us unfortunately anu anu nammale old testament le new testament le fear ne kurichu ottri vyathasam njan kaanunu adha no, no, fear of the lord is different from god is saying fear not not, on, not only in the new testament in the old testament also god has said fear not i am with you uh, i am going to fight the battle the battle is mine uh, ആ ഫിയറിനെ കുറിച്ചല്ല നമ്മൾ ഇന്ന് സംസാരിച്ചത് ഞാൻ അല്ലല്ല ഞാൻ പറയുന്നത് നമുക്ക് ദൈവം എന്റെ കൂടെ ഉണ്ടെന്നുള്ള ചിന്ത പലപ്പോഴും ഇല്ല നമ്മള് നമ്മൾ ചെയ്യുന്ന ഓരോ കാര്യങ്ങളും നമ്മൾ ചിന്തിച്ചാൽ അറിയാം ഒരു ദിവസം ചെയ്യുന്ന എന്തൊക്കെ തെറ്റുകൾ ചെയ്യുന്നു മോനെ ഇപ്പൊ മോന്റെ കൂടെ ജീസസ് താമസിക്കാന്ന് വെച്ചു അപ്പോ എന്തൊക്കെ ചിന്തിക്കും എന്തൊക്കെ നീ മൂവി കാണും എന്തൊക്കെ പാട്ട് കേൾക്കും എന്തൊക്കെ സംസാരിക്കും എന്നുള്ളത് യു നമ്മൾ അതിന ആ ഒരു ഫിയർ ആണ് വരുന്നത് അല്ലാതെ വേറൊരു ടൈപ്പ് എനിക്ക് ഐ ഡോ അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡ് കാരണം ദൈവം നമ്മളെ സ്വന്തം സാദൃശ്യത്തിൽ സൃഷ്ടിച്ച് നമ്മൾ പാപം ചെയ്തപ്പോ നമ്മളെ രക്ഷിച്ച് പരിശുദ്ധാത്മാവിൽ നമ്മളെ നടത്തുമ്പോൾ ഔട്ട് ഓഫ് റെവറൻസ് തന്നെത്താനേ വരുന്ന ഒരു ഫിയർ ആണ് അല്ലാതെ നമ്മൾ ഫിയർ ഓഫ് ദ ലോഡ് എന്നുള്ള ആദ്യത്തെ വാക്ക് 
ആദ്യത്തെ അത്രയും ഹോളി ആയിട്ടുള്ള ദൈവം എന്റെ ഹൃദയത്തിൽ വസിക്കുന്നു എന്റെ എന്നെ കാണുന്നു എന്നുള്ളതായിരിക്കണം നമ്മളുടെ വിശുദ്ധ ജീവിതത്തിന്റെ ഒരു ക്രൈറ്റീരിയ മെയിൻ ആയിട്ട് ഞാൻ പറയാം Uh, what I think is Babu was, uh, I don't know if I am, right? I was thinking of the negativity of fear. Anyway, I don't think that's not, that's not uh, yeah, it is a positive, but knowing God as he is. And you have a, are you going to uh, go into the other attributes of God also or only holiness? no only only fear of the lord we are discussing <laughs> no 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 fear of the lord and today you are talking about holiness like, holiness yeah uh, there are other things also looking at him as a creator a great he is so many things yeah. you have to to fear him as he is le kore karyangal undu namakku holiness is the most important thing that is uh, correct and uh, in the old testament as uh, so many verses and we all know the Psalm 128. Are you also going to say about the, um, what all we can gain by that uh, positive fear of God? Uh, that whole psalm which we sing during the marriage ceremony. Jehovah, Pai Pata, Mde Vajigal, Nadakunna, Manishan, Pagyavan, Varnita, Praya Kairingal, Varayamil. Correct, yeah. So, um, I, I hope you will be talking about that also. Uh, what the know. true fear, we'll fear of God is. Now because i have just uh, written down the eternal benefits of the fear of the lord will you be touching that then i will say then i am not sure what we're going to talk about <laughs> anyway i'll just mention those yeah. uh, uh eternal benefits of the fear of the lord it is the key element in change let like, yeah, change that it is the beginning of wisdom no wisdom yeah. is applied knowledge for good so all yeah, that lord what you are talking about comes from emanates from wisdom uh, and this is for our eternity the change that happens in us exactly. so isaiah um, we see the change and god did something actually the sarab one of the sarabs only took the uh, coal and put touch him yeah. so something has to happen from god's side for us to become uh, the change to happen but uh, we no that is that is jesus as bauchan mentioned that yeah, is yeah, jesus and the holy spirit yeah yeah, yeah. that is mm-hmm. and then another thing is it helps us to have a proper humble perspective of ourselves in relation to our awesome god he holiness like nammal like that i as i said who is me i yeah, am a man of one clean lips he, he became aware of who he was and all this is uh, for this world and also for eternity like that change yeah. then the third one is it helps us in times of temptation when we need to remember this uh, serious consequences of disobeying god uh, you... fortunately we don't but sir we are only worried uh, about getting caught in this life <laughs> no no, no. <laughs> that we have to uh, when we have this fear of the lord we will that will prevent us or help us in our times of temptation or i mean i don't know i just made some sense to me also true sense then another thing is it motivates us to become more like our loving creator our holiness namal arimba with god's help and jesus and holy spirit it will help us to uh, become more like uh, jesus and our jesus or our creator creator so ottiri karyangal ezhuthittundu illa all those are mama basically the, the 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 starting point is the wisdom that comes to us when we know god's oh. holiness when, when and that comes from uh fearing okay. god in the meaning of the the positive meaning as you said okay yeah. in psalm 34 if you read 11 13 and 14 it says a healthy fear of god includes the fear of the consequences of disobedience ipo nane mumbe parnena thanne ah having a deep respect reverence and awe for god's power and authority the yeah. power and holiness is the Other, most important unfortunately we don't have that see even adam he did not have fear before he sinned okay yeah there's no mention of fear in the garden of eden and he said uh, uh, jesus adam where are you where are you lord i heard you coming and i was afraid because i was naked 
Uh, Jesus, Jesus knew all that. I mean, God knew all that where he yeah, was. Of course, yeah. He had done no, so everything. That, that, that fear is because he knew who God was also. Okay? I mean, not just, yeah. uh, we, we don't yeah. have that kind of fear also. I mean, we just... Uh, should have an Allah. We should have an Allah. should have. There's no doubt about it. And all mm. this should lead us to love him. Love him yeah. more when we come to know him. Um, you know, the yeah. Love yeah. the Lord your God, you know. And it's a commandment. It's a to love God yeah, is a commandment. As God is holy, the fear in the negative sense uh, is displeasing to him. It's not, he's telling us also the negative yeah. side of fear. Because I am fear. You, yeah. you fear me. If you fear me and uh, um, love me, there is no need to fear anything else in the world. Confidence. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I think you will, uh, the ne next class you will go more into Dubai. I have learned so much, yeah. but it is okay. Can somebody else share? Okay. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Uh, I'll ask Dia to talk now. Dia, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Clear? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear yeah. you? Um, here, yeah, what I have understood is like, though, in, uh, you know, it is important to fear the Lord. That is one of the things that as humans, we, uh, uh, we fail to have. Because in the Old Testament also, it talks about fear of God. And in the New Testament also, what you see is that it is more about fear in a negative sense that Jesus had to keep saying, fear not, fear not, you know, that the right type of fear, which is to fear God, is not seen much. And that's why people, I feel, you know, the, the tendency to fall into sin because that reverential fear, which is uh, very, very important, is not there. In the uh, two, two, three scriptures, one is uh, what really touched me is when you read the book of Ecclesiastes, <clears throat> which I believe is written by uh, Solomon. And the whole thing is about how he chased so many things under the sun. Uh -huh. And in the end, what he has come to understand is written in the last two verses of Ecclesiastes. That is uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Uh, <clears throat> that is just a second. Then Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. Right? Uh, yeah. Proverbs. Yeah. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, the last verse after all that he, ex you know, he uh, writes about how he has seen different things in life and there is no point of running after all this. The, the final conclusion, what he gives is. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll say, okay. yeah, Go ahead. yeah. 13. Um, 13 says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. For oh, God, God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Yes. So finally, after it is this Ecclesiastes, I think is so beautiful. You know, it helps us as in our life. And finally, what he says is fear God, keep his commandments, and that is man's duty. It's it's uh, that is what I understood, you know, with regard to life. And in New Testament, you see more of Jesus telling about the negative fear, fear not. But yeah. at the same time, Jesus very clearly says in uh, verse in cha Matthew chapter ten, uh, verse twenty-eight, uh, he says he tells them, and do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but yeah. rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and, soul and body in hell, which right. he, he teaches them, you know, don't fear a man or fear the, uh, the things of this world, uh, which can kill your body, but then, you know, your soul, you should fear the one who can, you know. Uh, <laughs> Impact your eternity. Yeah. Yes. Right. yes. And even in uh, Romans, the beginning of Romans is about how uh, Paul talks about how the people are, they live their own life and their lust for each other and all that. And there also, uh, Paul clearly states, I think in verse uh, chapter three, verse God's judgment, all have sinned. And it, I think in 18 years, it says, 
there is no fear of god before their eyes correct it correct, is when yeah. we have no fear of god that we tend to you know uh, i think and that fear comes only as we grow close to the lord the yeah. more we grow closer the more that he wants us to do uh, becomes uh, more important to us and we see uh, uh, you know that fear of the lord growing more in us and there is an other kind of a holy fear that uh, i think in uh, paul paul's journey to the in the ephesians uh, some seven sons of skiva try to uh, take uh, devil out i mean uh, the uh, cast out demon from a man and then uh, the, the demon uh, made them run or something like that and then it says fear fell upon the end you know suddenly they real the people realized oh, my, oh what a mighty god is up in the heaven you know holy you know fear can also because of god's actions people can get i think in the old testament the people feared god they said moses you go up and talk to god be fear him Yeah, that kind I, of fear also sometimes uh, i think comes upon men yeah actually but in, it is there the in both in old and new lord i don't think you can uh, eliminate the negative aspects of it because uh, see what happened when when jesus came and lived a sinless life people hated him yeah okay the pharisees who were supposed to be the epitome of purity okay doing everything by the book uh, they were the ones who were maximum against him because they came up against a purity that was you know way 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 beyond what they could achieve and and that's why they had they developed a fear and hatred actually not only fear uh, toward yeah. him you know uh, so we we need to have a, a, a i see reverential all includes a, an element of fear that we 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 fear upsetting that person okay yes uh, not because of what they might do because the relationship will become strained okay uh and and that fear should be there i don't think we can just wipe out fear because of grace and love okay uh, but as bhavachan said god has given us a way to live in the required fear of the lord uh, first of all reconciling us to him through the son and giving us the holy spirit to lead us into all wisdom okay uh, because the wisdom is from the word of god and the word of god will be revealed to us through the holy spirit i just want to take a moment uh, i see a new gentleman abi would you like to introduce yourself or uh, maybe i already know you in which case i <laughs> apologize tremendously no no uh, actually i just joined because of sam uncle i was luckily uh, doing nothing okay so he advised me to join and uh, just got a chance to spend more time in the presence okay. of jesus oh, thanks and uh, thanks and, uh, yeah i think he mentioned uh, about you to me i, I forgot about it. okay thanks yeah this pretty pretty uh, uh relaxed bible study today was probably more relaxed than others but uh, okay so you're welcome to join and uh, sure sure uh, i'll uh, i'll send the link to sam and he can send it to you and then later if you want to join the group uh, on whatsapp i will uh, add you okay sure just one point i would like to add if yeah. you're talking about here yeah go ahead yeah. I, i i think from what uh, i understand is that uh, see we human beings are tuned to fear uh when it comes to uh, uncertainties in life correct okay so i think what god is telling is you have a choice you either choose to fear these answer see we you i mean you know how mind works so god is telling you either choose to fear these uncertainties or you choose to fear me yeah absolutely yeah so by choosing to fear me what happens is you'll have faith you'll right. you'll listen to what i tell you and one of the things i'm telling you is have faith believe yeah and uh, you'll be more uh, relaxed you'll be more calm and you genuinely you'll be more wise so i think it's just a choice of whether you want to fear what's happening every day in your life or choose to fear god and trust him that's all that's one point yeah, i would like that's what uh, dia also said you know but says in in, uh, in in the word of god uh, you know fear uh, don't fear the one who can kill your body but fear yeah, exactly. the one who can send your soul to hell you know so yeah yeah. yeah thanks and yeah thanks Welcome. thanks dia uh Dilip, yeah, did I? Did you say anything? No, you didn't. <laughs> I kept it. No, I didn't. <clears throat> no, I just want to kind of mention that you know uh, the fear of the Lord. I think is more in what I believe is displeasing God. You know, in in what we do. I think that's the more the accurate thing to me in in that sense. It's not really fear. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, fear of the consequences is something that we always worried about. You know, we always worried about what happens if we do this, and you know, God will punish us or 
just like how we used to uh, be scared of our parents, you know, if you do this, you know, you're going to get whacked or something, you know. So uh, that's not the right fear I think we're talking about. I think we're talking about the fear of God and displeasing uh, God. And also, you know, you mentioned about applying wisdom. And I think uh, you mentioned it off and on. But uh, I think wisdom also, what the world gives is not the wisdom we're talking about, you know. No. Because Satan is there to give us a lot of wisdom, you know. And uh, he's he always does this clever imitation of of the real truth. Yeah. And, and you think it's the truth, you know, unfortunately. And, and that's how false preachers and all come in. And, uh, you know, it's... Uh, I mean, actually... Uh, you know, I was very really disturbed by something that somebody sent last week uh, of a flyer that actually went to uh, U.S. schools, you know, um, one of the schools uh, in, in the U.S. Uh, and it was it was uh, promoted by the Satan Temple, Satanic Temple, you know, and they're asking people, asking the kids to, it's a flyer to small kids saying, please come and, you know, we'll, we'll develop individual thinking for you, we'll develop creativity for you and and it's, it says it's satanic temple and the devil is this thing, you know, and and, and uh, what they're saying is that, you know, the, the principal is saying, I can't do anything about it because it's a free speech. You know, they can give these flyers. You know, a lot of people want to keep principal kicked out, but he says it's a free, it's free speech, you know. So he, he is trying to enter through our kids, our grandkids or whatever, you know, and it's there. So we have to, it's, it's in our responsibility to instill this this that the the Lord is there and that He is the true wisdom. You know, it's not it's not about because there are a lot of so many self help books and so many things that you know uh, proverbs that we keep quoting. You know, God is God helps those who help themselves and you know in Rome do as Romans <laughs> do and all Lindliness that. Cleanliness is there, next to godliness. Yeah. So there is no there is no biblical truth to that, but we keep quoting that because they're good proverbs. You know. So yeah. what I'm trying to say is. We always need to worry about where our wisdom is coming from and where Absolutely. our wisdom for the kids and the, I mean, of course, science and all, I'm talking about science and other things. We need to apply that, no question about it. I mean, I'm a chemical engineer. I need to apply my chemical engineering knowledge in my work. But but that's not the wisdom I'm talking about. I'm talking about the wisdom that the world gives. And 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 Satan is a very good, you know, deceiver of these things and saying that I will give you the wisdom. And, and that flyer, actually, I'll send it to you guys. Uh, it's, it's something that really opens your eyes, you know, how... How deviated people can be, and 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 this the, and uh, in in the news guys interviewing this priest from the satanic temple, he says, "What's wrong with it? It's uh, it's it's uh, it's something. It's going to we're going to encourage creative thinking, and that's what the kids should be doing, not you know getting biased towards one particular uh, thought process and all that. Yeah. So it's is there, you know, if we don't do, if we don't act, uh, unfortunately, it's it, it, the kids and our grandkids will be going in a different direction. That's my. Yeah. But I don't think they allow anything from the Bible to be sent as a program. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. That's so exactly it. Is. And that's exactly what the, that's they can't exactly read the Bible, news. they can't pray, they can't send any um, um, pamphlets or flyers like this about the Bible and the word of God. That, yeah, but, uh, that they are, they are against. Yeah, but if you read that, if you read that flyer, it's very disturbing. I was really disturbed when I read it, you know. But unfortunately, that's what the US and, and the Western world is coming to, you know. Yeah. It's very sad, but that's how it is. So that is why this fear of the Lord that we're talking about and the beginning of wisdom and the wisdom coming from God is so, so important. You cannot emphasize the fact that displeasing God is something that we need to emphasize on. And the wisdom will come from Him, you know. That, that yeah. kind of. It's, it's anyway, has to be people, people there in the US to send flyers about our faith. Yeah, I, I know. know, but it's but they are they are not allowed to. That's what they're saying. They're they're saying. Huh? It's very disturbing. It's, just... it's very disturbing. <laughs> okay, Anyways. really disturbing. Tolerance for everything except Christianity. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah, that's all I have to say. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Obviously, the wisdom that we are talking about is. Uh, uh, the, 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 the understanding the reason for our living, as I said, the, the French expression raison d'être or whatever, it, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, but you know, the reason for living. We, we understand that when we come to face to face with the, with the holiness of God. And from that will emanate true wisdom because it starts with the instruction of wisdom, as it says in one of the Proverbs. And Solomon, who by, according to the Bible, is the wisest man of all time. Uh, and he, you know, he experienced and ex experimented with all kinds of things, like Gandhi's experiments with the truth. Uh, anyway, in the end, he says, "What is the conclusion of the matter? This is it: fear God and obey His commandments." You know, 
Now, God is giving us another way to do it in the New Testament, but it's still the same commandments, you know. Uh, but when, you, when you are able to move to a higher level of pure love, then you don't need to, you know, list down one, two, three, four commandments in your relationship with other people, okay? Uh, he, he did keep the first part, love the Lord your God, okay? And then yeah. he said, love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, so the, that wisdom has to come only when we sort of come face to face with the, the awesome holiness of God. Mm. Yeah. But Renu, Renu after a long yeah, time. Renu, yeah, she has to. <laughs> it is a... No, yeah, you're, you're, you're muted. Not, you muted yourself by mistake. Okay. I've been listening to everyone and I've been thinking this fear of the Lord in the Parayane, that entire thing, the way we look at it, at least the way I look at it, is immediately that punishment that you will receive if you are not, you know. It's so, there, there's so much more to it. And there's, especially nowadays, there's so much of information coming at you. I am only praying for discernment to that wisdom that you're talking about, even in our everyday, you know, so much is disguised in all these Absolutely. wonderful sayings from the Bible and whatever. They will use any method, anything. That is the subtlety of the devil. He will use anything. He will use the word to promote his, like he did with Jesus when he Absolutely. tempted him, you know. So that discernment is what I want to pray for because you know to know the difference so basically it is the word you have to have to have to spend time with the bible every day otherwise i don't think any of us can get even one step further with anything else yeah so so but yeah. this is a good uh, good uh, topic mm -hmm. for us to to dwell yeah. on because it really makes us question our very faith in, yeah. you know, what uh, God has for us. Yeah. And also, I think uh, the, the, uh, as much as, you know, uh, the, what, what Jesus has done for us, uh, at, at the end, the main purpose of was to reconcile us with the Father. So yeah. our focus has to be toward the Father more than Jesus. Even though in Revelations it says we will worship Jesus, uh, you know, and that's what we want to do all through eternity. It, it's about, I mean, it's the Trinity, right? So uh, it's it's the, the the holiness aspect is more emphasized through the Father than anything else, and we, Jesus reconciles us to the Father. So, in in our Christian walk, we should actually spend at least equal time contemplating on the Father as we do Jesus. Okay, yeah, uh, and the Holy Spirit. You know, <laughs> we don't unfortunately. We're more into the Jesus and the Holy Spirit, and the power of the Holy Spirit can do this and can yes. do that, and uh, so, uh, and it's all true. Of course, it's true. And and of course, the gifts of the spirit are only for this life. Okay. Sorry. The yeah. The gifts one, of the spirit. Uh, one not... one thing to Renu. Renu, this fear brings uh, gives discernment. So uh -huh. don't think of the punishment, please. <laughs> <laughs> this gives us the wisdom to know Absolutely. how That's to why, do I mean, this. Absolutely. 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 all about to the wisdom that way. emanates from the fear of the Lord. You know. Yes. So, so. Don't think of punishment. Forget about punishment. Just do. Uh, you know, someone. what I'm trying to say is sometimes you do the things you do only because of that fear of the consequences oh. of your actions. It should be out of love yeah. for God. Yeah. It's easy. It's yeah. easy but to say. Mean, what I'm saying is yeah. you lean it's towards easy. fear more than love at that yeah. point yeah. of time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There are circumstances you know? like that always. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I, yeah. I have a doubt. Okay. I have a doubt. Yeah. <laughs> when uh, we speak of the Holy Spirit, is 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 it not the Father, the Holy Spirit uh, in us? Is it not the Father moving and being in us? Then uh, yeah, uh, how Spirit. is that? Holy Spirit is uh, is one of the Trinity, okay, co-equal with the Father, uh, and the Holy Spirit is leading us to walk in the will of the Father. Okay? Uh, so if you, if you ask, is the Holy Spirit the Father? They they are all uh, one and the same, but three distinct persons. Okay, and and the the function of the Holy Spirit in this age of grace is to reveal the Word of God to us, so that we walk in the in the ways of the Father. 
uh, not just to reveal it for knowledge sake you know that doesn't help at all you know i mean uh to work, knowledge yeah. for knowledge sake never helps anyone you know uh, it has to be applied yeah. and that's where the holy spirit will guide us okay and uh, sometimes mm -hmm. even it will give he will give revelation uh, which may not be exactly in the word of god but in line with the word of god for us mm -hmm. to live our lives you know i mean yeah we are asked to revere the holy spirit uh, very okay. much in the bible well, so that i think is as close uh, as we get to god Uh, the the Holy Spirit. Does it say Holy Spirit? I don't think it says that. Pardon? I don't think it says that. I don't think it says revere the Holy Spirit. Anyway. No, if you speak against the Holy Spirit, ah, it will be ah, held against thing, us. Yes. Thing, the Holy You'd be grieving the Holy Spirit. Grieve the Holy Spirit. Grieve the Holy Spirit ah. is what it says. Yeah. Ah, yeah, sorry. That's, 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 yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. You know, it's very difficult. I mean, as mere human beings to grasp the the whole you know enormity of the presence of god in our lives you know very often you we know that when some sickness comes along we fear for our life more than anything else you know the Absolutely, the yeah. fear of dying and leaving this earth is uh, great in our lives and just i you know i wish that i will get to a level will that will not fear and i will not fear you know death physical death as yeah. much as I, as i started uh, the, you know fear i believe is something given by god to protect us okay that that natural yeah. fear only yeah. when it goes beyond the stage where uh, you're not able to do anything about it okay uh, and you're still afraid then then it's uh, something that uh, doesn't add value to your life it is not positive but normal fear which is triggered by our senses okay huh. uh, sending signals to the brain uh, might make us run away from a dark place or may may make me go to the room and ask who's here you know I mean? yeah. uh, showing us we are human <laughs> yeah but uh, we only can. when we are we become inactive because of fear then it's a problem. yeah right. i think like and those what yeah, montan said hmm. which is uh, you know this fear is sometimes a very healthy thing because it reminds me of that small example when a child touches a hot uh, kettle immediately the hand retracts mm -hmm. so the next time that hot kettle is there there is that small sense of fear which prevents the child from going anywhere close to that kettle right and also uh when last week when we doing ephesians and about the children obeying the parents uh we saw those verses about uh, uh spare the rod and spoil the child okay so if you if you use the rod it instills fear okay it, it, maybe the child doesn't understand why he must do that thing or not do that thing but if the rod is used appropriately that's what the old testament is saying anyway and even even uh, in the new testament paul says chastisements from the lord is for our growth okay uh, so uh, so it, it, i don't know if it matters which way we develop the fear as long as we learn to walk in his will okay now that's that's a debatable point should we do it only out of love uh, because that's the next level of of following god uh, of of re reaching a point where our love for him and our love for people will encompass all the other requirements god has laid out into the i don't know 366 different uh, laws or whatever but in in the 10 commandments basically uh, you know that that's the next level and uh, sometimes when we are still young in the faith maybe we should develop a healthy fear of god the knowing that he could get upset if we don't do it the way he wants us to that's debatable anyway right monchen yeah go ahead pinky yeah uh, i wanted to add that you know the uh, fear of god is actually it will bring us an understanding of his authority in our life right and uh, uh, accordingly our our um, uh judgment will be more aligned like uh, renu mama was saying that um, you should not do things out of fear but that fear which takes helps you take good decision i think so it is good yeah i think that's what i was trying to say but you 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 put it in a better way that it uh, brings us to understand the authority of god yeah yeah but uh, but and that's also, only when you uh, still will still uh and uh, what do you say also KG, KG i questions <laughs> <laughs> and also i wanted to say that you know uh, you know you do things out of love but uh, sometime uh, you know love should not allow you to ignore the authority of god 
like you know kids they can you know love you but um, you know we love our parents but uh, in their anger they can take wrong decision knowing the authority of parents mm -hmm. okay because they know they take it for granted because they know their parents very well so they can take that advantage but that is not allowed so authority should be respected you know so fear comes first and uh, it's uh, it's quite uh, uh, what you say confusing that out of fear comes wisdom and out of wisdom you fear god it's all related in the okay. yeah good point jesse are you there i'm very much there but uh, you know yeah it's uh, actually i think everybody has shared uh, pretty much you know all the things which i wanted to say it was so <laughs> exhaustive all the uh, explanations but one thing i uh, wanted to i was just thinking aloud and uh, i thought like you know uh, we see in the old testament times a uh, god who is very fiery and uh, just you know who has to be uh, always uh, feared mm, because you know like in uh, at the time of noah or uh, for sodom and gomorrah and all these things you know god just de destroyed but now we are all prevailing uh, by grace i think grace is with us and uh, moni you were telling about uh, we have to look upon the father uh, though we are always reaching out to jesus the ultimate should be to look upon the father uh, so and the holy spirit i think we have to actually for uh, see fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom and i think you know for all that we have to every day and all the time um, plead for the holy spirit to be with us yeah when the spirit is in us i think you know uh, because you know i don't know i am a very very uh, you know i am just a beginner in the matter of faith but you know every day uh, especially for all the people i love you know mm -hmm. i ask for wisdom i pray for wisdom you know especially for my son arun also i say lord i don't want anything for you to give for him i just want you to give him the wisdom mm -hmm. to make him live a life appealing to you means like you know i don't want him to be a rich man or anything but i just want you to give him wisdom uh, to 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 be a person useful to you for the world uh, that is what so i don't know whether it can be applied by everyone but i always ask for the spirit to be in me and i tell him also you ask the lord spirit to be in you all the time whenever you pray because when the holy spirit in, is in you you can never derail or make any mistakes or uh, always you will do the right thing that is one thing i wanted to share and another thing is along with fear uh, though we said that authority now uh, you know she was mentioning that is absolutely right but along with that i also feel that you know if a mother says lovingly um, baby please don't do that you know it will really hurt us and you know out of love what i wanted to re reiterate is that you know uh, along with fear Uh, the obedience comes also when love is a factor in it because uh, it will really hurt my uh, my mother it will destroy my dad it's uh, you know that when uh, that loving factor is there along with fear we will just walk in the ways of the lord that's what i also have i have thought um, i know um, because um, love is a very predominant factor i think because uh, to obey and walk in the ways you have to really live according to the will of that person or according to that person's commandment so i think the factor of love is also very important in that because babuchan also mentioned it uh, in a way yeah so yeah, i think it's a question of maturity really i mean if if, if a child is only a, a less than 3 years old or 4 years old i don't know no, how much no love, no no when you love. grow up also see yeah, yeah when, when you, you grow, grow up, up love love because, will take predominance over yeah. uh, uh, chastisement you know why uh, you know why because you know we are failing in many of those aspects i think because i am always quoting things around but you know there was a great news this uh, last week i saw one doctor who ha he had only 14 days to finish his house urgency but you know he was caught for uh, drugs and then he said there are 14 other doctors who are doing drugs hmm. and uh, he was asked since how long you are doing it since 3 uh, years so i really 
really cried, you know, thinking about the parents and about the doctors we are making or we are, you know, and who are going to serve the people. A person in a coma being attended by a doctor who is high on LST or something. So, you know, this is like, you know, how does this happen? Because when the fear of the Lord is there, it will control our actions and give us wisdom. So who should train in that, you know? So the, say baby, if the mother, I don't know, if the mother alone is the, this thing, the society at large is responsible for all these things. But uh, when we address the big problem, uh, individually, all of us are trying to save ourselves. But when we look at the world at large, it is alarmingly derailed. Uh, that's what I feel. Uh, maybe I'm also imperfect yeah, in I, a big way. I, I yeah. just said it a bit more, uh, uh, I don't know if you can call it philosophically, but uh, you know, the, the Bible talks about a judgment day and some people going one way and some people going the other way. So it's obvious there will always be both the both the sides, okay? So how much ever you worry or do something about all the what's going on in the world, some of it is not going to change, Jesse. Okay, we can only change ourselves. Okay, uh, seriously, we should, uh, you know, uh, as I said uh, that I forget his name again, that author from about uh, 60, 70 years ago. Someone asked him, uh, "What's the problem with the world?" Because if they're not, in those days also, if, if the same sort of problems were there, but uh, maybe uh, not so heightened. I mean, people did drugs then also, maybe. And he said, "The problem no, with the world, the world the is me." You know, for the doctors to do it, imagine. You know, they are the people to save lives. And uh, yeah, yeah. so, See, yeah. now the thing is, uh, anyone who takes any intoxicant, uh, uh, and that includes people here, I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, there's doctors, a time for that. Doctors there is a, used to do it in the seventies also. There Better is take. a time and place for that. If you're doing it while you're going in for surgery, then it's a different matter. Whether it's drinking or drugs or whatever. Okay. So I don't think I, I, I don't think I should say that. Taking drinks by itself uh, should preclude someone from becoming a doctor. Okay. Uh, I, I don't think so. I mean, you know. Uh, so there is no uh, there is no prerequisite like that you know that uh, that aspect is totally overlooked by everyone we don't yeah, know what type yeah. of a human being maybe he is a thug or a culprit and he is learning to become a doctor there are many rich families uh, whom i know you know who, who is uh, studying for uh, more than 10 years to be a doctor because the family wants him to be a doctor he doesn't care at all they are rich they want him to be a doctor but you know he is into everything so there are many instances. Yeah, there there many. was a friend of mine in my fellowship. He became yes. a doctor and then decided not to doctor. Okay. <laughs> he went into <laughs> something else. He's not, not a bad guy. He was into ministry and all that. But he said, no, doctoring is not for me. Okay. <laughs> like reno has got a, a co-brother, I think. Okay. Uh, right? In, in uh, Trivandrum. Yeah. You, you must be knowing him. He's not doctoring. Okay. <laughs> uh, Achu, is that what's his name? I mean, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, uh, for want of a nail, what was lost? The kingdom. So, yeah. <laughs> so, what the, I think it what uh, Jesse to uh, put it in a nutshell, she says, yes. as a mother, you instill, you know, you start from there. You give birth to this child and you instill as much as you can. I mean, you know, to guide him along the way. Then the choices are up to him yeah. and what the world provides for him, Correct. Absolutely. whatever. Yeah, that, no, that's what. Because in that, psychology, when we learn, it is even saying from the breast to the bottle. See, a, mother, a child who is, yeah, there is a very big phrase in psychology because I have learned psychology. They say no, an alcoholic is evolving from the breast. So the thing is the love, nurturing and the values that is instilled into him, it is all in the brain because from the time in the womb, the child is, uh, you know, getting tuned to the world. That's why they say, you know, the mother should listen to good music. She should not be agitated. She should not be, um, you know, a wicked person because all these, emo all these play a vital role to create that person, you know. So I think uh, a mother can really uh, play a very crucial role. I know, of course, this is not the topic, but the fear of the yeah. Lord can be instilled, you know. This yeah, is what can I'm be thinking. instilled. Uh, as you said, th there is a point at which you can instill it in love. But I think before yeah. that, like, like when, when a baby comes out of the womb, I mean, you're not going to try and teach the baby how to put the pampers or, uh, you know, go potty or whatever. You'll have to do it for the baby. Okay? No, in, no. In the if the mother way, is... Uh, 
violently handling the baby or if she is gently hugging the baby makes that, a world of difference. Way. That's a yeah. Way. But this you still have to cool. do things for them. They, if they're going to run into the fire, uh, pull it out of the fire. I saw a lovely ad yesterday, not Sam really connected it. with Sam this. Sam said it. Sam said yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, you know, in a, uh, no, maybe not connected. I was watching cricket yesterday and there's this new iPhone ad. Uh, this young kid takes the, I think maybe the kid is, I don't even know if it's a boy or a girl, two or three years old, takes the iPhone and bangs it on the door and the baby caught and, and the camera's on. So sometimes you see the baby's face, sometimes you see, and then, and then he throws it in the sink and then, you know, uh, and then finally he throws it on the ground. Okay, then the mother takes it and puts it in her pocket or whatever, and then the kid starts bawling, you know, because you lost the iPad, iPhone. Uh, so the, what I'm trying to say is, kids will do things that uh, you cannot instruct them in love at that stage, okay? <laughs> so there is a, as I said, love is the next level for us to obey God, okay? And that's what Jesus brought into the world, okay? Uh, he said, I can no, do no, all these no, commandments. No, what I'm those attitudes get instilled. It is a, it is starting from the, you know, it is a, it's getting instilled in the brain. That person evolves to be that, because these are all like, you know, all these traits right. and character. You, things. you know, we have to instruct them in the word because we are born in sin and we tend towards evil. Okay, so if the parents are are just worldly wise, uh, that's not going to help the kid much. Okay, whether it's education or uh, uh, whatever, you know, we have to let them know that they need to come out of that sinful state. We are born in sin, all of us, okay? Yeah. Yeah. And even our children were born in sin. The newborn baby, I don't know, there was somebody born recently. Uh, we, they have to come out of it, and that has to be their own choice. But in the stage, until they reach their own choice, uh, godly parents can instruct them, okay, in whichever way, either through a little bit of fear or chastisement or punishment, and later, when they're older, try to explain to them why it, why it is so, why the word of God is important, why, uh, depending on the Holy Spirit. Absolutely, as you said, and Gita said, the Holy Spirit is, is the one who is sent as a helper for us to live according to the will of God. Okay, uh, and, and there's, there's no two ways about it. We cannot do it on our own. Okay, uh, yes. there might have been a few exceptions in the Old Testament, but uh, uh, we have the helper with us, and that's a huge advantage we have over the people in the Old Testament. You know. See, yeah, God yeah. was not without love in the Old Testament. Okay, don't miss it. He was not just a fearful God. How he no, no, compares no, Israel no, no, to no. a harlot. Okay, he said, I, I made you my bride. I made you my bride, and look what you're doing. You're whoring around with the Egyptians, you're whoring around with the Babylonians, you know. And he takes, I, I don't know, Jeremiah or uh, uh, Ezekiel and uh, to try and explain to them. What are you doing to our relationship? For sure. Yeah. Yeah, Mon, I, I just have two comments on Jesse. Jesse, what he just said. Yeah. Two things. One is, uh, I agree with you, Jesse. A lot of things, the mother has a lot of things to do with it. The parents have a lot of upbringing. But I yeah. think what we as parents, and at least Melly and me, we prayed always, and God has always answered that, is, you know, peer pressure. You forget that, you know, because yeah. it's only, you can you can bring them up to seven, eight years old. After that, you know, it's it's what their friends do is what's, what they do, yes. whether you like it or not. Okay? Yes. That is where you need to pray for them that God will yeah, give them a good set of friends. I was thinking also. That is absolutely essential. There is no question about, I mean, you can keep, keep you can't keep banging them all the time because ultimately, yes. whether it's drugs or whether it's studying or whatever they do, they will do it. You know, if they all go to a bar and do drugs, they will do drugs. <laughs> if they all study, they will study. Yes. So that is extremely important that we as parents yes. pray for our children, our grandchildren, that they have a good set of friends. You know, yeah. Bringing yeah. them up is definitely important. But it's the friends that control them. I mean, we, I know, I know, I, I, mean, I keep telling this example to everybody. I mean, I, I've, I've had a good education, you know, very good schools, very good institutions. I still remember coming back from IIT, you know, home, from vacation when my dad screaming at me and I was just thinking to myself, you can keep screaming at me, dad, it doesn't matter. Two, two months time, I'm going to go to a hostel and I'll do what I want anyway, you know, because it's, it's, it's exactly what all kids think, you know, and I, I remember this, I was 16 or 17 at that time, you know, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, God, I mean, dad, you can keep screaming at me, it doesn't really matter, you know, that's, I'm not even hearing what he's saying. So yes, what I'm trying to say is ultimately it's your friends and your thing is what governs what you do. That's, what, that's one thing. Yeah. Secondly, I just want to quote one verse because you said, you know, you keep asking for the Holy Spirit. Let me just 
Could this reverse some efficiencies uh, 113 to uh, 15? And you also have included in the Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the mm. promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are in God's possession to the praise of his glory. Yeah. So the Holy Spirit is in us. We don't have mm -hmm. to ask for it. He's a, it's a guarantee. Yeah. It's a guarantee. Yeah. And whether we listen to him is a separate issue. Okay, we can he can be in us, and when, and and we can keep saying, yeah, he's in us. He's a guarantee, so you don't have to ask for it. All we need yes, to do yes. is make sure that you know we listen to him. But he's a guarantee yeah. of the Holy Spirit. It's a, there is no once we accept Jesus Christ, he is a guarantee. So we don't need to ask for it. That's yes. all I have to say. God, yeah. God is able to do everything. So let's yeah. all pray. It's all Whoever great. we have in mind, let's pray. Yeah. And for each other's children or grandchildren, exactly. let's exactly. give them all, give them to God. And, and Gita, just two, I just had a comment about your fear of dying. Okay, just commenting on two things. What people talk about, you know, men of God, of course, uh, and you may know both of them. One is uh, Rajkumar. He says, yeah. he always says this to everybody, you know, death is a promotion for me, you know, yeah. for anybody. Because you're going from a place that you have sickness, you have tears, you have problems to something that, you know, <laughs> where everything is great. You're know, going with God, going to be with God. Come on, what can be better than that? So he says one is a promotion. And even Billy Graham saying, you know, in, in an interview saying that, don't believe when people tell me, uh, tell you that I'm dead. I'm not dead. Only my address has changed, you know, from an earthly address yeah, to a heavenly right. address. So it's as simple yeah. as that, you know, so. Look at that. That's that's what you need to okay. be. And that hopefully all of us come to that level that, you know, it, okay. we look forward to this. I mean, not because we, we don't have, we don't want, we still have earthly responsibilities. I'm not saying no. But okay. if it happens, it happens, you know. It's, there's nothing to fear about it. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm oh, By the way, uh, it's not Billy Graham or Rajkumar. This is a uh, Christian group called Jazz of Clay. They had a song called It Don't Matter, okay. And they, the, the verse is like, the, the phrase is like this. It don't matter where you bury me. I'll be home and I'll be free. Yeah, yeah. it's the same thing. Praise same God. thing. I'm just, it's Praise the same God. thing. Just, yeah, just, <laughs> just mentioning a few points. That's all. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Right. I, I, I'd like to share a point with this. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, Jesse, I'm not sure if I heard wrong, but you said uh, <clears throat> you're you're really working towards the pray to the Holy Spirit and to the Father to instill the Holy Spirit in your uh, son, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And no, no, so, not to instill, because to let him walk in the ways well, of the spirit. I mean, yeah. what the spirit so, discern. Because uh, yeah. like Ren said, the discernment, you know, because yeah. he has to, he is now shifting to Dubai. He's trying to shift to Dubai. So he, he needs a lot of guidance. And for yeah. that, you know, I'm really praying for it. That's what I so, said. So yeah. mother's yeah. prayer will never, ever uh, go for this thing. Okay, one thing. Second thing what I'm telling is, uh, access to the Holy Spirit only Jesus can give us, I feel, I believe. Yeah. Uh, access to the Holy Spirit or accepting that Jesus Christ is Lord and praying to Jesus yeah. directly. No, no one is above him. Yeah. That right. will give us access to the Holy Spirit or the Father because he is, he is everything. He is the Father yeah. and he has access to everything. So we need to pray to Jesus. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. All right. okay. okay. Thank guys. you. Thanks Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay. We'll have one more session. We'll see how it goes. Okay. okay. Yes. Bye. Let us. Bye. Good. Okay. Good.